In this video we consider a simple example of Danzig Wolf decomposition. So we focus on the following LP with two variables. We maximize x1 subject to the two constraints here and uh, these are the complicating constraints. In addition we have the set constraint given by a very simple set. So we just have a box with the side of 1. So x1 and x2 are both between 0 and 1. This problem is solved graphically here. So we can see that the feasible region is given by this triangle here and then we are maximizing x1. So clearly the optimal solution is given by x star with x1 star equal to 3 fourth and x2 star given by 1 half. The set X, which represents the simple constraints, has four extreme points. The first one is origin, then the second one is 1, 0, the third one is 0, 1, and the last one is 1, 1. So we will apply the Danzig Wolf decomposition to solve this simple LP. Here we have again the extreme points of X listed. And we'll start by developing the Danzig Wolf reformulation. Let's denote by A the matrix of coefficients in the left hand side. So A is 1, 3, 2, negative 3. And then B is the vector of right hand sides, which is 9 fourth 0. Also, the vector of the objective function coefficients C is given by 1, 0. To develop the danzig wolf reformulation, we use the representation theorem to describe any point from the set X capital as a convex combination of the extreme points of X. So we have x is equal to the summation of lambda j's xj's. So we have lambda 1 x1 plus lambda 2 x2 plus lambda 3 x3 plus lambda 4 x4 where the summation of lambdas is equal to 1. And of course, all lambdas are non-negative. Using this matrix representation, we can write our LP as follows. We have maximize C transposed X subject to AX is less than or equal to B. And then X belongs to the set X capital. To obtain the danzig wolf reformulation, we are going to represent our vector x from the set x capital as the convex combination of the extreme points of x capital. And we obtain the following reformulation. We'll have maximize the summation of C transposed xj for j between 1 and 4 multiplied by lambda j subject to the summation for j between 1 and 4 axj multiplied by lambda j is less than or equal to b and then we need to specify the convexity constraints for lambdas so the summation for j between 1 and 4 of lambda j's is equal to 1 and lambda j's are greater than or equal to 0 for j between 1 and 4. Now, since our set X capital only has four extreme points, we are going to spell the danzig wolf reformulation out explicitly. So we start by writing down the objective. In the objective, the coefficient for lambda 1 is C transposed times X1, and X1 is given by the origin. Therefore, we have zero coefficient for lambda 1. Then the coefficient for lambda 2 is going to be given by C transpose times x2. And x2 is 1, 0. 
and the vector c is also one zero so the scalar product of these two vectors gives us one so the coefficient for lambda two will be one so we have maximize lambda two then plus the coefficient for lambda three is going to be c transpose times x three we have one zero multiplied by zero one gives us zero so lambda three will be missing from the objective and finally the coefficient for lambda four is given by c transpose times x four one zero multiplied by one one is one therefore the objective is lambda two plus lambda four now we specify the constraints the vector of coefficients for lambda one will be given by a times x1 x1 is zero so the coefficients for lambda one will all be zeros now the coefficients for lambda two are given by a times x2 we have this matrix a right here and the vector x2 is one zero so the vector of coefficients for lambda two will be given by the first column of a so it's gonna be one two times lambda two then the vector of coefficients for lambda three is given by a times x three and x three is zero one therefore this vector will be the second column of the matrix a so we have plus 3 negative 3 multiplied by lambda 3 and finally the vector of coefficients for lambda 4 is a times x4 a times x4 will be 4 and negative 1 and this is less than or equal to b the vector of right hand sides which is 9 fourth 0 so these are the first two constraints of our danzig wolf reformulation and then of course we have the convexity constraints lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 plus lambda 4 is equal to 1 and all lambdas are non-negative next we are going to put this lp in the standard form by introducing the slack variables s1 and s2 for the first two constraints so this is our master problem and we are ready to initialize the restricted master problem by picking a feasible basis for example we could pick the variables lambda 1 s1 and s2 as the initial basic variables then we'll obtain the following restricted master problem since we don't have any of the three variables that we picked present in the objective the objective is to maximize zero subject to the first constraint only has s1 from the list of the three variables so we have s1 is equal to 9 fourth for the second constraint we have s2 is zero and for the third constraint we have lambda one is one and of course we have the non-negativity constraints obviously this lp is trivial to solve so we have the objective of zero with the values of the variables given right here so let's denote the dual variables for our problem by y1 y2 and alpha and at every iteration of our method we are going to produce the following table so we'll have y1 y2 alpha which is the values of the dual variables at the optimum which are given by cb transposed b inverse so of course cb is the vector of the coefficients for the basic variables in the objective right and then b inverse is the inverse of the basic matrix 
So this is what we are going to write in row zero of our table. Then we'll have Z bar, the corresponding optimal objective value for our restricted master problem given by CB transposed B inverse B. Then uh, we'll have the list of basic variables given in the last column here. So then in this part of the table, we'll just specify B inverse. And then here we'll specify the values of the basic variables at uh, the optimum given by B inverse times B. And here we'll just list the basic variables. So for initialization, we have this restricted master problem, right? And of course, CB transposed is given by the vector zero. The objective is zero and the basic variables are S1, S2, lambda one. So here is what we have for initialization for our case. The basic matrix is given by the identity matrix. So B inverse is gonna be just the identity matrix. Then here we'll have zeros for the optimal values of the dual variables. And uh, next we are going to specify the objective here and uh, B inverse times B, the values of the basic variables are 9, 4, 0, 1. And in the last column, we specify the basic variables S1, S2 and Lambda 1. So this is what we have for initialization. Then we need to solve the column generating sub problem. And the column generating sub problem is to maximize the reduced cost. So here we have a maximization problem. Therefore, we want to maximize the reduced cost instead of minimizing it. And the reduced cost is going to be given by the coefficient in the objective minus the values of the dual variables. So this vector right here multiplied by the corresponding column for the variable lambda j in the constraints. So for the column generating sub problem, we want to maximize C transpose times X minus the product of uh, Y1 and Y2 by this part of the column for lambda j y1, y2 multiplied by ax and then minus alpha times 1, the coefficient for lambda j in the last constraint. So minus alpha and we want to maximize this over our simple set, right? So x belongs to x capital. So this is our column generating sub problem. We need to solve this problem at every iteration with updated values for the dual variables, which come from the optimal tableau for the restricted master problem. And then we need to see if this value is positive. If it is positive, we will have a new column that will generate for the restricted master problem. If it is non-positive, then we conclude that the current optimal solution to the restricted master problem is actually optimal for the original problem and we terminate. Okay, so here I copied all the data that we need in order to carry out our iterations and we are ready for the first iteration of the Danzig-Wolf decomposition. So iteration one, in initialization, we already have the optimal table for the restricted master problem. And now we need to solve the column generating sub problem. Our column generating sub problem is going to be maximize C transposed X is given by X1. Then Y1, Y2 times AX is going to be zero because both Y1 and Y2 are zeros. And then minus alpha, we also have zero because alpha is zero as well. So we just have maximize X1 subject to X in the set X. And the set X is given by the unit box. Both X1 and X2 are between zero and one. 
and we see that obviously the optimal solution is given by x1 equal to 1 and x2 could be anything within the unit box so let's pick one of the extreme uh, values for x2 here say x2 equal to 0 and the optimal objective value z hat is given by 1 so we effectively generated the extreme point of the set x capital which is x2 so our x2 was 1 0 and now we need to generate the corresponding column to our restricted master problem because clearly the optimal objective value is greater than zero so we have the entering column so this column if we put it in the original problem data will be given by c transposed times x2 in the objective and then in the constraints we'll have a times x2 and 1 so the matrix a is given here the vector c is 1 0 c times x2 is 1 and then in the constraints we would have a times x1 would be the first column of the matrix a which is 1 2 and then the last entry is 1 so this is the column that we generate for our restricted master problem and obviously it corresponds to the column for lambda 2 in our master problem so if we go back to the master problem we see that the column corresponding to lambda 2 has 1 in the objective and then 1 2 1 in the constraints and this is exactly what we observe here now this lambda 2 entering column is specified here in terms of the original problem data but we need to convert it to the current basis given by s1 s2 and lambda 1 in order to update this information for the restricted master problem so in row 0 we will have the reduced cost that we already computed as the optimal objective value for the column generating sub problem and uh, this is given by 1 and then for the part corresponding to the constraints we need to multiply this vector by b inverse from the left in order to obtain the remaining entries of our column our b inverse is given by the identity matrix so we still have one to one and we will use this entering column for lambda two in order to update the optimal tableau for the restricted master problem so let me copy the tableau from the previous step and we use this column as the entering column but in fact since we are using the tableau format we need to multiply the reduced cost by negative one so in row zero we'll have a negative coefficient so that's why lambda two will be the entering variable and now we perform the ratio test to proceed with the master step so this is what we call the master step so looking at the right hand sides divided by the entries in this column we obtain the ratio of 9 over 4 for the first row then 0 for the second row and 1 for the third row clearly 0 is the smallest this will be our pivot element and we proceed to compute the new tableau first we specify the pivot row by dividing all the entries by 2 so we have 0 1 half 0 and then for the right hand side we'll have still 0 and now the new basic variable for this row is going to be lambda 2 instead of s2 then for row 1 what we need to do is to eliminate this entry right here this is done by multiplying the updated row 2 by negative 1 and adding it to row 1 so we'll have 1 negative 1 half 0 and still 9 fourth for s1 
then for row 3 we need to multiply the updated row 2 by negative 1 and add it to the old row 3 in order to obtain the new row so you'll have 0 minus 1 half 1 and still 1 for lambda 1 and finally we update row 0 to obtain the new row 0 we just need to add the new row 2 to the previous row 0 and we will obtain 0 1 half 0 0 for the objective value and this is just the list of our basic variables so this is our updated tableau for the restricted master problem so as we can see all the dual variables are non-negative so this tableau is optimal and we see that we performed at the generate iteration the objective still remained the same and our current point still has lambda 1 equal to 1 and the rest of lambdas equal to 0 meaning that we are still remaining in the first extreme point which was the origin after this iteration so now we are ready for the second iteration iteration 2 we start by formulating the column generating sub problem again in this case the optimal dual solution is given by 0 1 half for y1 and y2 so this part is going to change in the objective alpha is still equal to 0 so we have x1 coming from this part we have minus y1 y2 multiplied by the matrix a and y1 y2 is given by 0 1 half so it's gonna be minus x1 from the first column and then plus 3 halves x2 from the second so we have x1 minus x1 plus 3 halves x2 which is just 3 halves x2 so we maximize 3 halves x2 over the set x capital right and again this is a trivial problem because our set x capital is given by the unit box so we could pick let's say the solution given by x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 1 so x3 was the extreme point 0 1 clearly the objective is greater than 0 so z hat is 3 halves therefore the solution to the column generation sub problem is going to produce a new column for us and that column will be the lambda 3 column corresponding to the extreme point x3 so let's write down this column expressed in terms of the original problem data so we have c transposed times x3 in the objective so we have 1 0 times 0 1 is 0 and then for the constraint rows we have a multiplied by x3 which is given by the second column of matrix a so we have 3 negative 3 and finally for the convexity constraint we have the coefficient of 1 so this is the column corresponding to the variable lambda 3 if we go back to the master problem we can see that this is exactly what we have there for the variable lambda 3 we have 0 in the objective and then 3 negative 3 and 1 in the constraints to introduce this column to the restricted master problem we need to convert it to the basis corresponding to the variables s1 lambda 2 and lambda 1 as basic so we know that in row 0 it's gonna be the negative of uh, z hat which is negative 3 halves and then in the constraint rows we will have b inverse multiplied by this vector 3 negative 3 1 so for the first entry we'll have 3 plus 3 halves which is 9 halves then for the second entry we will have negative 3 halves and for the third entry 3 halves plus 1 which is 5 halves 
So this will be our entering column for lambda three variable. Next, we perform an iteration of the revised simplex. For that, we take the previous tableau and use lambda three column as the entering column. We start by performing the ratio test. For row one, we have nine fourth divided by nine half, which is one half. Then the second row doesn't participate in the ratio test. And for the third row, we have one over five halves, which is two fifth. So this row wins the ratio test and this is our pivot element. Performing the pivot, we obtain the following new tableau. So we can see that the new optimal solution to the restricted master problem has lambda 2 equal to 3 fifth and lambda 3 equal to 2 fifth, which corresponds to the point uh, 3 fifth, 2 fifth in terms of axis. So x1 is going to be equal to 3 fifth and x2 is equal to 2 fifth because remember that our x is uh, lambda 2 times this point plus lambda 3 times this point and this gives exactly 3 fifth 2 fifth because the rest of the lambdas are zero so essentially our current solution in terms of axis is located on the line segment between the two extreme points x2 and x3 also the slack variable for the second constraint is non-basic so if we look at where we are right now geometrically our current solution after the second iteration is on the intersection of the line segment connecting these two points and the second constraint line so this is our current solution so we went from the origin to this point after two iterations now we are ready for the third iteration. We start again by writing down the column generating sub problem. So for that, we of course use the dual optimal solution to our restricted master problem. Now we see that y1 is zero, y2 is one fifth and the alpha is three fifth. So to write down the column generating sub problem, this is what we compute here. So from C transposed X, as we know, we have X1 and then minus Y1, Y2 given by 0, 1 fifth times the matrix A times X. So this product will give uh, 2 fifth X1 minus 3 fifth X2. So combining it with X1, we obtain 3 fifth X1 plus 3 fifth X2 and minus alpha, which is three fifth. So this is what we maximize over our set X capital. And clearly the optimal solution is gonna be given by X1 equal to one, X2 equal to one. So we essentially generate our extreme point X4 given by one, one. And the optimal objective value Z hat is 3 fifth plus 3 fifth minus 3 fifth, which is 3 fifth. Clearly it's greater than zero. So we end up generating the new column corresponding to lambda four. The column for lambda four expressed in terms of the original problem data is one in the objective, then four and negative one in the first two constraints and one in the convexity constraints. So this is the column that we have in terms of the original problem data. And now we need to convert it to the currently optimal basis S1, lambda two, lambda three. So for that, we use the negative of Z hat, which is negative three fifth in the objective. And uh, we multiply B inverse by the part of this vector corresponding to the constraints to obtain the remaining entries. We obtain 9 fifth, 2 fifth and 3 fifth. So this is our entering column for lambda 4. Let's copy the previous optimal tableau and we are ready to perform the master step now. We start by doing the ratio test 
from the first row we have 9 20th over 9 5th which is 1 4th then 3 5th over 2 5th is 3 halves and 2 5th over 3 5th is 2 thirds so the first row wins the ratio test this is our pivot element and we proceed to update the tableau This completes iteration 3 and we are ready for iteration number 4. We start with the column generating sub problem. And in this case the column generating sub problem is to maximize. We have one third and one third for y1 and y2 and 0 for alpha. So the coefficient for x1 is going to be 1 minus 1 which is 0 and the coefficient for x2 will be 0 as well so we have 0 objective which means that the column generating sub problem does not produce a new column and we can conclude that the currently optimal solution to the restricted master problem is in fact optimal for the original problem we see that our optimal solution is given by x star equal to one fourth x4 plus one half x2 and plus one fourth x3 so it's a convex combination of the three extreme points x4 x2 and x3 and recall that x4 is 1 1 x2 is 1 0 and x3 is 0 1 so our x star is for the first entry we have 1 fourth plus 1 half which is 3 fourths and for the second entry we have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth which is 1 half so we obtain the point 3 fourth 1 half and uh, we can see that it is exactly the optimal solution that we obtained graphically. So 3 fourth 1 half. And in our case, we saw that it is a convex combination of these three extreme points. But it could also be obtained as a convex combination of uh, these three points right here, which are x1, x2 and x4. So we can see that there are alternative optima for our master problem. Finally, I would like to point out that we performed the four iterations of the Danzig-Wolf decomposition method. We saw that we ended up generating essentially all the extreme points of the set X. And clearly this was not an efficient way of solving this particular problem but this example was just to illustrate the mechanics of it